I think some of the factors that we really do focus on for cervical cancer is that we do know that um, certain um, epidemiological risk factors, smoking is a cofactor for development of um, cervical cancer and sort of affecting the immune system's ability to clear HPV infection. Um, immunosuppression, so patients who are transplant patients, patients who have HIV or are on chronic steroid use, those are a lot of patients that we sort of don't think about who are particularly at risk for HPV infection progressing to either pre-invasive or invasive cancer. Um, and so I think that those are definitely populations. We know that HPV infection and cervical cancer also risk factors include lower socioeconomic class. Um, there is also a um, disparity in terms of race. Um, there is also a disparity in terms of um, different populations, in terms of new immigrant populations tend to have higher rates of cervical cancer. A large part of that does stem back to where we can focus our screening programs, and I think that's one of the other directions that we really have to continue to work on. Now, in, in light of these uh, continued disparities, do, do the new screening recommendations concern you at all as far as discouraging women from coming into the clinic? I think that, you know, I think that they don't worry me too much because I think that we, you know, I think all of our practitioners and people who are in ob and family medicine and internal medicine who are doing pap smears, I think will we'll just need to be very cognizant that they need to recommend these screening and the kind of the length of the interval screening for a very select group of patients who have had normal pap smears, who they've been able to document normal pap smears. So of course any changes in screening you know, recommendations does concern us, but I think our main rec recommendation is for women to seek information from their providers, make sure that you have had a pap smear, and also to keep, you know, track of when your pap smears are and, you know, so that you can provide that information if you change doctors or anything like that. So I do think there's always that worry. I think when you're an oncologist, there's always that worry because our bias is, tends to be towards finding more screening, you know, trying to screen as best as we can. But we know that in this group of population who've had a series of normal pap smears, more pap smears does not find more cancers. And I think that's why those recommendations were made. So.